Good day, and welcome to the graduation of the class of 2022. I would like to thank all of the family, friends, and faculty who are here today. As I consider the years that I've spent here, I have begun to realize just how much the encouragement and assistance you have provided has guided us. I imagine that I speak on behalf of the entire class when I say that your support has been instrumental in shaping the successes that have led us to today. Without the faculty of this school, we would never have been able to reach the academic heights that we have. Without the support of our families, it would have been far more difficult for us to perform to our full potential during our, the course of our scholastic journey. And without the friendships shared between our classmates, this year would not have been the extraordinary adventure that it was. Thank you, everyone, for all that you have done for us this year. Well, good afternoon, and welcome to the O'Neill's commencement exercises. And thank you, Logan Hewson, for the class of 2022 salutatorian for the invocation. And thank the O'Neill Choir very much for that lovely rendition of the alma mater. I'm Stan Bradshaw. I'm a trustee, and I've been with O'Neill for over 20 years. So I'm profoundly honored to be part of this important event today. And I want to extend a warm welcome to the families, friends, faculty, and staff who are gathered here. And obviously, congratulations to the class of 2022. When the teachers and administrators say that when they think of the class of 2022, the breadth of their interests and talents is exceptional. They include writers and athletes, scientists, artists, performers, and many in this fine group fit more than one category. You know, members of this class are committed to the service of others. They're leaders, they're positive, passionate, and fun. So some members of this class have been at O'Neill for 14 years, and others have been here for a shorter period of time. But we are so glad that all of you are here as members of the class of 2022. Mr. Elmore is attending his daughter's commencement today, so he's recorded a short message for this important event. Good afternoon from Interlochen, Michigan. The O'Neill community comes together, family, friends, faculty, students, and staff, to recognize this important step for our class of 2022. 
I want to start by thanking the seniors for all that they have done for the school and their fellow students. We also thank the senior parents and guardians who have entrusted us with their children and shared their O'Neill years with them. And thank you, the O'Neill faculty, for the dedication, support, and love you have provided these students throughout the years. It is impossible to consider the class of 2022 without recognizing the extraordinary journey of their upper school years. The pandemic did impact O'Neill, even though we remained in person for the vast majority of that period. Starting in 10th grade, the class of 2022 has had a different experience, so I'm glad that this spring you have had a sense of normalcy in the classroom and athletics with field day, prom, and this commencement ceremony. Several years ago, Paul Tuff described the characteristics you, our soon graduates, have developed over the course of your years at O'Neill. What matters most is to develop a set of qualities that includes persistence, self-control, curiosity, conscientiousness, grit, and self-confidence. Economists refer to these non-cognitive skills, psychologists call them personality traits, and the rest of us sometimes call them character. I have seen these qualities in each member of the class of 2022. Your character, individually and collectively, has brought you all to this milestone. Your futures are very bright, and the entire school community congratulates each of you on your many accomplishments. Schools like ours are not just buildings. They are communities of people who share an important period of time together. I am proud of each of you and look forward to all that you will accomplish. Congratulations, Class of 2022. You have come so far over the years together, and you will always be a special part of the O'Neill community. Go Falcons! On behalf of the faculty, staff, and administration of the O'Neill School, it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce the Class of 2022 valedictorian, Ms. Stephanie Deeker. Good afternoon, actually. Good afternoon. Um, in an age where we are constantly confronted with the newest information, the fastest ideas, and the loudest opinions, it is difficult to embrace and appreciate slow and genuine reflection and conclusion. Instead, we opt for an ending with a series of simple and easy cliches. Just keep going. Live for the moment. You do you. While these phrases and ideas have a place in our lives, it seems wrong for the token pessimist of the class of 2022 to preach those to you today. So, in an attempt to avoid these common ideas of the present, we must naturally return to the past. During her last public appearance on November 30th, 1601, Queen Elizabeth I delivered her famous golden speech. The speech was the culmination of over 40 tumultuous years on the throne. While we cannot exactly equate the conference room reserved sign on the door with fighting the Spanish Armada or standing in line for chicken minis with avoiding assassination attempts, as always, I believe Elizabeth's rhetoric and words of wisdom have a place in and can apply to our lives. The entire meaning of Elizabeth's speech is context heavy. Don't worry, I'll spare you the, the details. All you need to know is that instead of an, a typical address regarding the economy, Knowing that she would not return, Elizabeth pours out words of love and appreciation for her people. As such, the most well-known part of the speech is born. For it is not my desire to live or reign longer than my life and reign shall be for your good. The past four years have been an experiment in which I hope you are able to try and find what is and is not for your good. After an excruciating JV season, I am fully aware that tennis is not for my good. <laughs> but I found some things that are. The Tudors, Hamlet, Dimensional Analysis, Molly and Bella, this is your shout out as promised. You are for my good. Of course, these things look different for each of us. Some of us were able to find the good in sports, where you worked incredibly long hours to achieve levels of performance you were proud of. Other, others of us were able to find the good in arts, writing original songs, and even creating businesses out of incredible artwork. 
Others of you even found that small things, like rollerblading in the hallways, Sudoku, or ping pong, were ostensibly for your good. High school was an opportunity to try and find the subjects, hobbies, activities, and people that set you apart and bring you together. The clubs that you tried, the classes that you stretched yourself in, and the relationships you formed were each a different way to find what became for your good. But what is for your good now will not always be that way. You know this, the clothes you were wearing freshman year are not the clothes you find yourself wearing now. The motivating dreams you had of being a ballerina or baseball player when you were six are not the hopes and goals that sustain you today. Elizabeth emphasizes that she does not want to continue being on the throne, an objectively favorable position, if it does not serve her people. Embrace the opportunity to assess whether what you believe is for your good now can be or should be any longer. The career you have your heart set on now might not be the path you take four years from today. Reject cognitive dissonance, the subconscious and pressured shift of opinion, and appreciate the work that changing your mind and changing your ideas takes. There is no shame in declaring that the things that fulfilled you, the things that were for your good, for however long they might have been, may have shifted. Instead, slow down, practice reflection, and then be bold enough to choose or find the next thing that fills that role. Yes, believe it or not, even the entire class of 2022 can relate to Queen Elizabeth I in some way. As her self-proclaimed spokesperson, I can say that she would be proud of the individuals that are graduating today. You have found what is for your good and you will continue to do so. Congratulations to the class of 2022. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Stephanie. O'Neill is also honored to welcome Brenda Jackson as today's commencement speaker. You know, Brenda worked at the O'Neill School from 2001 until 2011, first as the, first, the school's first chief financial officer, and then ultimately as the assistant headmaster and director of institutional advancement. Brenda's three children, Ben, Andy, and Maggie, are all graduates of the O'Neill School. Originally from Pennsylvania, Brenda is a proud graduate of Duquesne, after working in public and corporate accounting, she and her family moved to Rockingham. Following her time at O'Neill, Brenda has worked at the Sandhills Community College as an executive vice president and chief operating officer. Earlier this month, she received an honorary doctorate from Sandhills Community College, and the citation read in part, Brenda's kindness is legendary. It infuses every decision she makes and every action she takes. She simply is the kind of leader, the kind of person we all hope to become. Dr. Dempsey referred to her as the Wizard of Airport Road. And this educational corridor of Moore County certainly has been transformed for the better given her 20 years of service to our institutions. We are grateful for all that she's done for O'Neill. Please join me in welcoming Brenda Jackson. Just a little housekeeping, I'll be right with you. <laughs> well, good afternoon. Thank you, Stan, and welcome students, faculty, families, and friends to graduation day at the O'Neill School. I am Brenda Jackson, and this is a homecoming for me today. As a former O'Neill parent for 13 years and an O'Neill employee for 10 years, it is my honor to give the commencement address. Thank you for having me today. Robert Orburn, a comedic writer, wrote, a graduation ceremony is an event where the commencement speaker tells the students dressed in identical caps and gowns that individuality is the key to success. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you are all dressed the same today, I do understand that this is a class that is made up of individuals, unique individuals. I understand this is a strong academic class with offers to some great colleges. Northeastern, West Point, Smith, Davidson, various NC State schools, just to name a few. Congratulations, well done. In this class are quite a few athletes. I understand two in the Thousand Point Club for basketball. And track and field, golf, basketball, baseball, swimming, all had impressive years. Congratulations, well done. 
I understand we have among us artists, actors, singers, and Olympiads. Once again, wow, congratulations, well done. Yet, Mr. Peel tells me that first and foremost, you are a group of leaders. In fact, he assures me if I say two words to you, you will quickly follow them up with two more. So let's try it, don't let me down. If I say be good, you say do good. Oh my gosh, that was awesome, thank you so much. I was a little nervous about that one. <laughs> So be good speaks to who you are as a person, right? Do good speaks to your actions and service towards others. I understand that you have been using these words to talk about respect and acceptance this year. And I believe that, in fact, is the silver lining in this mess, this pandemic from which we are emerging. I believe it's okay to be you, more so now than ever. As Dr. Seuss wrote, there is no one alive who is youer than you. You have obviously been very successful in order to be here today. You have obviously set goals for yourself and achieved those. I know that you have dreams and aspirations. Pursue those. What I'd like to do today is give you a little an ancillary advice to consider along the way and some examples. Despite the fact that the examples are names of my children, that's not what's important. <laughs> what's important is the situation. So if you'll just please pay attention to the situation, that will be great. I'm gonna make this relatively easy and painless, only six words to remember. Look up, be amazed, give thanks. So look up, be amazed, give thanks. Look up, in our dogged pursuit, of a goal we can miss so much, and it is often what's in our periphery that really speaks to us or captures our attention. Mark Twain said, the two most important days in your life is the day you were born and the day you find out why. If you are constantly looking down in pursuit of that seemingly elusive goal, you may miss the answer to why. My daughter Maggie went to O'Neill from kindergarten through 12th grade. We have a few of you O'Neill lifers in the group today. In high school, she just needed something different. She needed to look up and see who and what was out there in this big, wide world. O'Neill made it possible for her to go to Vigo, Spain, and this was a life-changing experience, not only for her, but for the family with which she spent five months. She became fully immersed in the Spanish language, learning their customs, their day-to-day -day activities, and she was way outside her comfort zone. Communication was hard at first, and she had to play board games with the two boys in the family in order to teach them English as part of her keep. Her love of soccer ended up serving as a source of encouragement for the daughter in the family, who joined the local woman's Spanish team. Several years ago, Maggie's Spanish mother and father came to her wedding, and they said they could not miss the first of their now four children to get married. Maggie looked up and she found a whole nother family in Vigo, Spain. Look up. Secondly, be amazed. When you look around, it really is a beautiful world. Wherever you are going, go with eyes wide open with wonder. If your life has been tough, it is going to change. If your life has been perfect, it is going to change. You will be challenged, tested, stretched, but you'll also be excited, freed, and yes, amazed. As an example, my oldest son, Ben, went to UNC Chapel Hill. He went from having less than 100 classmates to having 4,500 in his freshman class. He felt a little bit lost in the social stratosphere at the college. He decided to look up one day and he found an organization called Camp Kesem. Camp Kesem recruits student leaders across the nation to serve as role models for students whose parents have or had cancer. This organization believes that all children facing a parent's sickness should be able to be them best, their best selves. Ben worked with a group of teenagers at the camp and helped them deal with time away from home where they were often the functioning adult. He gave these young adults time to feel silly, be stupid, just have fun and be themselves for a change. As I stood waiting to pick Ben up one day from Camp Kesson, the campers who had dubbed him Keeper for his soccer prowess hugged him, not wanting to let him go. Ben was amazed at the impact he had on those campers. In large part due to his Kesson experience, he's now a practicing physician. The constant need to be at the top of his game can be mind-numbing at times, but he continues to be inspired by those Kesson kids and the families who are in need of help, 
encouragement, and care. He looked up and was amazed. Be amazed. Finally, since we're talking about give thanks and I only have one more child, um, <laughs> give thanks to whomever and whatever has sustained, motivated, and nurtured you. Whether that is God, family, friends, your pet, or some combination of all the above. My middle child, Andy, said, I am thankful that O'Neill taught us to be all adults, although some of us were more receptive to that concept than others. He felt encouraged to ask questions at O'Neill and have conversations with the faculty. He remembers if you were away with several sporting events that you could come in the next day and you could talk to Dr. Miller or Ms. Garrison or Ms. Wilder and you could say, is there a possibility I could take that test later? The answer may have been no, and that was fine. The important thing was you were encouraged to ask. You were allowed to have those conversations. He is so thankful for each and every one of you. Friends and family mean a lot to Andy, and he in fact chose his college based on where he could go and get to learn about extended family. He was curious about my family's upbringing in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and went to my alma mater, Duquesne. He is thankful the years he spent with grandparents, uncles, aunts, and cousins attending birthday parties, dinners, and first communions. Their constant support was instrumental in Andy's success at college. He was amazed by the city that would give you a coat off the back, and it was often emblazoned with a Pittsburgh Steeler logo. Tim Minchin, an Australia actor, singer, and comedian says, define yourself by what you love. Be demonstrative and generous with the praise for those you admire. Send thank you cards. Give standing ovations. Be pro-stuff, not just anti-stuff. So today, give thanks to those who got you here emotionally, educationally, physically. In conclusion, look up, be amazed, give thanks. Your whole life lies ahead, and you have what it takes to succeed. Be you, make a difference in this crazy, chaotic, beautiful world. As the inaugural poet Amanda Gorman wrote, for there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you for your time. Mr. Bradshaw, Mrs. Gutschmidt, Mr. Peel, Mrs. Jackson, trustees, faculty, parents, and friends, it is my pleasure to present to you the O'Neill School Class of 2022. I ask that you hold your applause until each student is properly introduced. Talia Antonia Baldwin. <clears throat> Alexandra Buchanan Barnwell. Connor Joseph Birdsall. Assisting in the presentation will be his mother and current O'Neill faculty member, Christine Birdsall. Yeah. Sering Peldzome Blackwell.
Logan Esteban Bozovich. Assisting in the presentation will be his mother and current O'Neill faculty member, Maureen Morales. Nathan Joseph Briannis. Jace William Brown. George Andrew Casey. <laughs> Isabella Grace Zarnick. Stephanie Lynn Deeker. <laughs> Drew Michael Ebner. Vigneshwari Elamaran. <laughs> Garrett Christopher Graham. Alan Gutschmidt. Presenting his diploma is his mother and current chairwoman of the O'Neill Board of Trustees, Denise Gutschmidt. <laughs> Molly Janelle Harlow, assisting in the presentation will be her parents and current O'Neill faculty members, Jeff and Casey Harlow. Good job. Emma, Rachel, Take us. Jake Donovan Hanley. Kristen Grace Howell, assisting in the presentation, is her father and former chairman of the O'Neill Board of Trustees, Lee Howell. <laughs> Logan Husing.
Aiden Irish Jones. Andreas Panayotis Kakoris. Nicole Valentina Kelly, assisting in the presentation, is her father and current member of the O'Neill Board of Trustees, David Kelly. Jacob Wayne Lemons. <laughs> Jalen Andrew Lindsay. Clara Eva Lucier, assisting in the presentation, is her father and current O'Neill faculty member, David Lucier. Joshua Edwin Manning. <laughs> Kaylin Elizabeth McCarney. Assisting in the presentation is her father and current O'Neill staff member, Charlie McCarney. Eland Richard Miller. <laughs> Victoria Evangeline Mills. Assisting in the presentation is her father and former chairman of the O'Neill Board of Trustees, Stuart Mills. <laughs> Jeremy Nguyen. Morin Renee Samples. Assisting in the presentation is her father and current member of the O'Neill Board of Trustees, John Samples.
Connor Airy Smitherman. Madeline Brooke Vaswani. Assisting in the presentation is her mother and current O'Neill faculty member, Melissa Vaswani. <laughs> Emily Ann Jude Wacker Paleo. <laughs> Malachi Anthony Ward. Taylor Monet Woods. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the O'Neill graduates of 2022. Graduates, you may switch your tassels. Well, remain standing, if you will, and again, join me in recognizing the class of 2022, because following the recessional, we're going to have reception outside, but I want to thank you, Mrs. Jackson, thank you, Board of Chair Trustee Denise Gutschmidt, and it's my great pleasure to congratulate the graduates again. You may toss your caps.
Yes, you have family coming you go to the reservations at Scott's Field and stuff. The hunt is coming down to the university in a few weeks. We're making the whole thing. Yes, definitely. Yes. Are you coming to the faculty days too?